A social context in, in which globalization is happening has to do with the mobility of people and the mobility of the workforce. And that goes back to the basic question about what kind of globalization are we talking about? Are we talking about the globalization in a sense that people can move now much more freely? What do you think? Do you think people can move much more freely now around the globe than they could, let's say, 200 years ago? In some aspects, certainly, yes. I mean, we have airplanes, we have cars, we travel around, but this is more like we visit other countries. We really, we, we travel more in a sense of a touristic trip. Uh, we usually, we often don't get a visa, we don't get to stay there. So there are a lot of visa regulations in place. And if you look at how it was historically, if you, for example, see the statistics of the United States uh, immigration, you can see that between 1820 and 1870, 30% of the United States population consisted of immigrants. Nowadays, that's less than 5%. So back in these days, uh, entire continents, I mean, significant part of Europe basically uh, moved from Europe to uh, some to North America and some to South America. A lot of permanent reallocation was going on during these times. Uh, nowadays, we won't permit such a global flow of immigrants actually so we have much less globalization in some sense especially in the sense of permanent reallocation of people we don't we don't allow that and now this has very important uh, effects also on the economic setting which are well known for example adam smith one of the fathers of economic theory modern economic theory uh, he's often seen as the defender of the free markets. And it's true, he said, well, free markets are very efficient now, but what many people forget, he also says the labor market should be unrestricted, should be free. Not only the capital and the product market, also the labor market. And he was a big critic of the European governments at the time because he says they didn't leave things at perfect liberty. And by obstructing the free circulation of labor and stock, both from employment to employment and from place to place, they created what he called a very inconvenient inequality in the whole economic system. So he said, well, if you don't allow skilled people to go to the job that they're actually in and you don't allow inefficient people to be kicked out, you know, you create a big inequality. And this is one of the points that we have to talk about if we talk about today's globalization, because labor is not free to go from one place to the other. Now, inside a political and economic union like the United States of America or the European Union, there are actually four different freedoms that allow for the free circulation of, of things. Uh, one is the free movement of capital, especially here in the European Union. That means that you can send money around all the European Union without any restriction. And the second one is the free movement of goods. That means you have a product, you can send this product around and sell it wherever you want. Uh, and both of them have also been pretty much globalized. So if you are a micro entrepreneur in Cusco, Peru, you can now sell your crafts work all over the world because you can sell your products, there's free trade and you can receive the money for the payment. So this has been a big flattener in terms of money and products that are now basically being globalized, free flow of them. Now, the European Union is based on two more freedoms. One is the free movement of services that basically refers to labor, so labor service, labor services. So if you're a hairdresser in the European Union, you can go to any other country and provide your services. If you would go to an, some other countries, you, you might need a work permit. So this is a fundamental freedom provided here. And uh, fourth, also the free movement of people. So you don't need a visa inside the European Union. If you have one European passport, you can just travel to all other countries. Now, these last two, they have not been globalized. So nowadays you still need work permits, you still need green cards, you cannot just go to another country and provide uh, work services, and you cannot just go and stay in other, any other country. You need a residence visa. And these are two different processes and they have completely not been globalized. So actually if you talk about globalization, it's an interesting question you can ask about globalization of what? In this period of globalization, there have been other periods of globalization in the 1800s that were differently, but in this period of globalization, we basically focus on the globalization of money and products, but not of the free flow of labor, which is very restricted nowadays, and not on the free flow of people. Well, actually, I have to qualify this last statement a little bit. It's more like this. If you are rich, 
then you basically have residency all over the globe. Then you're a globalized citizen and you're welcome everywhere. If you're poor, not so. Because when you're rich, you can buy yourself visas. That's a common practice nowadays. So for example, in Australia, with a million US dollars and the proof of owning another $1.8 million. So for about $3 million, you can get a permanent resident visa and, and stay in Australia forever. Uh, in the UK, you also have, actually it's an investor program, and you have to, you have to invest $3 million, but then you can also get a visa in the UK and you can stay there. Uh, what about the United States of America? Famously in the stage of liberty, it says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. So what about there? What's with the poor and, 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 and huddled masses? Well, according to one of the programs, if you only have $500,000, so only half a million dollars, and you prove the creation of 10 jobs, then you can also get a visa in the United States. So I don't know if half a million dollars is considered poor, or if actually this thing on the stage of liberty should be rewritten and should more, more be like, uh, I don't know, bring me your Versace bag and Gucci class masses. Maybe that's a little bit more accurate. <laughs> well, as basically what I'm saying is if you're rich, you get visas. With the result that nowadays also in the, in the open ocean, you see, uh, you see you have these dramas of immigrants that are actually stateless. They don't know where they should go. Nobody really wants them. Europe is struggling with that a lot. North America is struggling with that a lot. Also, uh, some developed Asian countries are struggling with that a lot. And uh, there's a big difference of previous areas of globalization where really the tired, the poor and the huddled masses were welcome. And nowadays, uh, globalization, as you can see, focuses a lot and has to do a lot with the globalization of money.